this is some of the, uh, the activities that we do as well. Um, of course, in an immersive response situation, we try to stabilize and recover and salvage something. Uh, but uh, occasionally, we are directed by authorities, in this case, uh, maritime port authorities uh, of Singapore, to, um, to remove the danger to the lighthouse. This is Horsburg Lighthouse. Uh, these container cranes, and then from this angle you cannot see it really, but they were leaning towards the, uh, the lighthouse, and we had to remove that danger, uh, and uh, basically by collapsing them into the sea. I'll show you that later. Thank you. Yes. Well, um, you've got. Uh, I think your, your handouts uh, here, so you can, uh, of course, make notes and, and also uh, uh, read later on uh, uh, what, what the slides are and, and so on. And some, uh, some statements there, but basically what we would like to address is uh, and what, what the casualties are, the initial response to, uh, to an incident, uh, controlling it proactively, uh, dealing with it uh, at this stage. I think a lot of these things are common sense for a lot of people, very much common sense. Um, the moment, of course, uh, uh, people need to work on the stress, really also on, on board the ship or uh, on the stress from authorities or otherwise. Um, Common sense sometimes uh, goes out of the window, and it's good to have then uh, your procedures in place, which I know you do, uh, to, uh, to to deal with it basically. Um, <coughs> what helps with this is of course an uh, incident command uh, system uh, kind of approach, many, many types. Um, I think the incident uh, command system to us is quite familiar. Uh, we, we provide services in the United States for OP-90, uh, salvage and marine firefighting. And um, we can have the best systems in the world, of course, in the United States, but basically the captain of the port in uh, the United States will basically take over and, and more or less dictate, according to the plans that are submitted, what's going on. And it's within the, uh, the system that is, uh, that is set up uh, to, to stay with it and, and, and be proactive in providing the information and, and uh, the information control is, is very important. Um, and there's a hell of a lot of information that you normally on a day-to-day -day basis routinely uh, take care of. Uh, the moment that, of course, you don't have a re routine situation, which is an incident, um, then, of course, uh, the behavior of the stakeholders is different. Uh, uh, commercial friends, commercial cargo uh, uh, relationships uh, might not be so friendly at that point in time. And, Everybody is uh, protecting their interest, either direct or through their uh, legal representation, and that makes communication sometimes a bit difficult, of course. Um, so we will we'll address that as well. Uh, salvage service and contracts. Uh, my position within Resolve is a commercial manager, so I'm uh, dealing with, uh, with, with contracts. Um, and of course, everybody uh, knows one contract that is hardly any uh, used anymore. The uh, Lloyds of Perform, we will address uh, some of that. There's a lot of uh, myths about it and, 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 and uh, warning uh, signs that uh, if you ever hear of the term, they run away very quickly. I think there are uh, situations when something like that can be considered, but uh, uh, overall, I think it is right if it's misused, if it's not handled in a proper way, uh, then those kind of contracts uh, can be a liability. Whereas, of course, you don't want additional uh, aggravation during an incident. Um, so the contracts, there are a few aspects to it. I think we try to link that to the scenario that we uh, are going to play out as well. I think there are certain areas uh, where you can see, well, okay, this is uh, fairly basic, uh, fairly defined scope of work, uh, so why should I have a kind of uh, contract that accommodates for everything else and, and so on, so uh, that can be restricted where uh, maybe there are other aspects where there is maybe 
not so much uh, clarity on how a process will develop and then a different kind of contracts might be more suitable. And then uh, the, the aftermath, uh, putting things uh, back together again, uh, uh, because as a software, of course, uh, we're not a ship repair company, but you basically want your ship into, back into service as quickly as possible um, and not stabilize the situation and then move on and continue your, let's say, day-to-day uh, -day business as soon as possible. Um, and the aftermath actually, if, if the, the pre-planning and the handling during an incident uh, is not taken care of, this might have a knock-on effect at the tail end, basically, of an incident. And there are many, many examples of this as well. And it can be very costly, of course, uh, to you as a company, uh, reputation-wise, but also purely uh, uh, your insurance underwriters, and that reflects in premiums uh, or increase in premiums as well. So, incident can be uh, defined in different ways, of course, uh, indeed, uh, something that is uh, right there immediately in your face or something that is uh, slow and, uh, and, and developing over a longer period of time. And I, I think what I just mentioned about the aftermath, if, you, if there's an analogy there, um, there can be something brewing throughout in, in response to an incident. And, and basically coming out at the, end, the, the back end of the uh, uh, incident and uh, something that is completely uh, obvious uh, when, when you're dealing with it, a big fire or so, and, and, and that need to be controlled. So what kind of uh, uh, casualties do we deal with? Um, you just acknowledged that uh, you had also incidents. Uh, may I ask, uh, have you experienced any of these uh, incidents uh, before? Grounding. Um, Grounding. Collision. All of the above. Oil or, spill, uh, fatality, fire. fire. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Uh, and, others. <laughs> and others. And others, yes. Uh, <laughs> I think the others is basically all of the above, right? A, a mix and a combination of all of them. Uh, if there's a uh, collision, uh, you have uh, either uh, a wing tank breach or, or something else, and of course you have a spill, collision, um, possibly water ingress, um, stability issues, uh, uh, cargo issues, uh, you name it. Uh, and We've got a lot of experience in incidents and types of incidents, but I can tell you every single incident uh, stands on its own. Of course, there are uh, rough uh, general uh, similarities, but uh, a grounding here in Singapore at uh, Severock Beacon uh, is completely different than maybe uh, a grounding three miles uh, to the south of that, uh, that position in Indonesia for, uh, I guess, obvious reasons. Um, but the determining factors uh, and what need to be dealt with, um, yeah, we, we, we often get the, the, the queries say, well, you should know this as a solver, how to deal with something. And in broad terms, we do know this, but you need to see where the critical factors are. Here in uh, Batam, Indonesia, if there's a crowning, I think everybody's looking, of course. Uh, Indonesia would like to present themselves as proactive towards the neighboring countries. If that grounding is in Indonesia, but it's, uh, let's say, of uh, Makassar, I think the attitude uh, is sometimes a little bit different. And uh, it doesn't mean that uh, the repercussions from the Indonesian authorities uh, would not be there. Likely, if a vessel goes aground, it always goes aground on coral. Uh, pristine uh, nature uh, reserve, uh, fishing grounds, and so there will be a lot of authorities or non-governmental organizations that very quickly come in and that uh, their livelihood has been affected, uh, basically. That is almost uh, without fail. Um, so it's also sometimes very important to, to mitigate those aspects. Of course, the, the vessel needs to be uh, dealt with. And, and, and uh, stabilized, but uh, the, the elements of that may be actually 
uh, forming the critical path in dealing with the incident might not always be with uh, with uh, dealing with the vessel in initially itself. So I think uh, intuitively, um, if, if there's like a, like a fire, everybody understands. Oh, now uh, we really need to move, and and something needs to be done. If there's a grounding, I think that uh, that sense of urgency is not always there. Uh, we sometimes see uh, the vessel is safely aground. Now, I think there's no such thing as safely aground, but um, uh, you could say, well, the, the, the short-term impact to the vessel is, is limited. Um, but if you are safely aground uh, in the uh, south part of uh, Korea or so, and you have like a tidal range of seven or eight meters, um, there, there's a lot of stress that, uh, that will be uh, uh, subjected on the vessel. Um, to, uh, to uh, and that have, uh, can have like serious consequences, of course. Um, collisions, yeah, um, it, it really depends. Uh, you can operate uh, your vessel uh, the, the best way you want, cruise, uh, fully alert, and, and so on. But if an external factor comes in, uh, and uh, we've seen it here of, of Singapore, um, New uh, container vessel, uh, 11,000 TEU. Uh, new, relatively new uh, LNG carrier, uh, of course, operated by uh, with, with a proper, proper crew on board. And uh, the LNG vessel parks it in mid ships into the container vessel uh, while uh, uh, overtaking basically uh, just outside of Singapore. So there you have two very modern vessels, navigation issues should not be an issue at all. Good crew, but incidents do happen. And um, the LNG vessel needed to SDS, which is quite an undertaking. The uh, container vessel had, uh, I think, 600 uh, damaged containers, water-affected containers. Um, they had uh, quite a bit of uh, oil spillage. The full load of containers needed to be removed or transshipped. And uh, so you can see that it, uh, an, an, well, relatively simple mistake, even again by uh, very uh, quality ships, um, uh, can happen and have a huge impact. Uh, normally, um, uh, like piracy, and uh, we initially had like uh, uh, stowaways and so on on this list as well, and this will impact you. Uh, if you go sail to the Mediterranean or Horn of Africa and so on as well. It, it's a, a little bit further removed from a salvage uh, situation. I think it's more like, an, uh, an, an, uh, like a criminal kind of uh, investigation or like a humanitarian uh, kind of uh, aspect to it, political aspect. But of course, these kind of situations uh, may impact you as well. But it becomes more like an... Um, PR and, uh, and, and, uh, and other types of situations, I uh, would say. I was not looking at the picture, but the uh, uh, small uh, LPG carrier, this was in uh, Taiwan, a job that we did uh, a couple of years ago, uh, laid an uh, LPG carrier ground. Um, we removed the uh, LPG and uh, uh, basically had to uh, uh, scrap the vessel because uh, it's too shallow and she was uh, significantly damaged. Uh, we've been involved in this uh, case of uh, New Zealand, a uh, relatively small, a small uh, uh, container vessel, 3,300 TEU, the Rina, and uh, yeah, this is uh, fairly short after uh, she, uh, she ran aground. Um, we have uh, one of our senior salvage masters uh, uh, involved in this, in this case as well, or was heading the uh, removal of the Costa Concordia. Uh, a lot of factors uh, uh, that, of course, uh, were very much uh, politicized, uh, an incident happening in, the, uh, in Italy, so government uh, steps in. I think uh, total bill maybe close to $2 billion, uh, where uh, maybe if 
people were a bit more pragmatic, that would be significantly less. In this case, in total, um, initial emergency response for the removal of oil, about 1,200 tons, that thinks she leaked about 300 tons, um, including the wreck removal, which we took part in. Uh, there's still somewhat uh, remaining in the beaches cleaning up and so on. This was uh, about half a billion dollars. So you don't want to end up in a situation like that, of course. Also quite a familiar case, uh, the Maritime Macy, uh, where um, a an, 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 uh, chemical tanker uh, on fire, okay, immediately respond between Korea and Japan. Um, it took quite a long time to uh, suppress the fire and, and then uh, deal with this. Um, the the solve were involved and uh, claimed that the, the, the ports didn't allow refuge of, for the vessel. And uh, maybe that was the case, uh, but it took basically another 50 to 60 days before the vessel could enter into Korea to discharge the remaining cargo and, and go for repairs. Uh, I think the total operation was uh, something like that, but I think it took 40 uh, to 50 days to, to, to get the, uh, the fire under control, and then uh, she was basically kept going offshore, and, uh, and in a very uh, undesirable situation, because uh, there's maybe another picture of this, half the ship is gone, uh, so there's quite uh, some concern as to the strength of the vessel. Um, and, and here I think uh, proper coordination is, is really required. Uh, if a situation would have happened, uh, we've been looking into this case as well. Um, in this case another solver was involved, but it takes really a concerted effort between all the stakeholders to make this, uh, this problem go away or, or, or handle it basically. So, um, if you say, well, we need to um, go into a port, an authority uh, doesn't have any, any basically, uh, consideration for an owner's commercial pressures. Um, they are only concerned about the port safety, security, uh, uh, the uh, environmental issues, um, maybe the economic situation of their port, but apart from that, they, they basically uh, are, are not really an, uh, a party to any commercial handling. Turned out a little bit different in this uh, particular case, but um, <coughs> what I often see, uh, what we see if we deal with, uh, with the ship owner, manager, and we go to an authority, the first thing is, well, the uh, shipping market as it is, is under a lot of pressure. So um, it would be appreciative uh, appreciate it if the authorities could help a little bit by uh, by being a little bit more lenient and, and getting a vessel in and uh, yeah everything is fine uh, we, we put it in lay by third and, and take the necessary uh, precautions and maybe uh, authorities should tell me what you expect me to do so I think from that perspective uh, the authorities say well you ask me what uh, what you need to do well I need uh, five ducks uh, I need uh, Two kilometers of oil boom. Uh, I need that protected. I need safety standby arrangement. I want you to uh, deal with uh, the cargo issues. So you get like a whole shopping list of things that you need to do. Uh, whereas I think uh, before approaching an authority, I think you try to reverse it and move it around. Say, so, well, this is all that we have prepared, and uh, we believe uh, on this basis that we have uh, covered all the contingencies. Uh, maybe have a look at it, and then. Uh, advice if it's possible to go into into port and that's actually what happened uh, uh, port doesn't want a derelict vessel not that uh, she's in, insured and so of course but the moment that she's in port uh, maybe the urgency to to repair or to move her away once the situation is stable is not there but she will take up uh, a berth take up an anchorage and uh, this is something that an authority, of course, is concerned about. So all these aspects need to be handled. Um, and ultimately that was done. But um, with a whole uh, fleet of, of tugs, salt force, firefighters, uh, for I think a total of 90 or 120 days uh, that this case took, 
uh, that was of course a huge amount uh, of, of money. An older case, uh, this is of course something that uh, we don't like to see. Case uh, uh, in Singapore. Uh, I think the fortunate thing about tank is they are quite uh, solid. Even though you have a wet shaped uh, damage in the cargo holds and there will be spillage, which is of course uh, uh, a terrible thing to happen, um, but the stability of the vessel will normally be quite okay. Um, I think in this case she lost about 2,000 tons. 5,000 tons. 5,000 tons? From the Milana 3. Yeah. And uh, in Singapore. So, uh, Resolve was involved with the oil spill response as well, um, as part of the res uh, responders, because basically, in this particular case, MPA pulled out all the stops. Uh, any any uh, operator that uh, was involved with collecting oil or, or dealing with any spillage was engaged. Um, We've been also involved with another case, and also thank you that had a, had a collision. I also lost uh, about 4,000 tons of, of, of fruit. Uh, that was about two years ago. But nobody heard about this. Uh, and, and this was uh, off Horsburg in uh, the Natuna Sea. Um, and the oil basically was uh, drifted out further into uh, the monsoon uh, seas in uh, Natuna Sea, never to be seen again. So. Uh, to me, that was a surprising uh, development. Uh, they uh, they sent out search parties to uh, coastal areas in Indonesia. Uh, they had overflights with uh, with, with uh, aircraft, of course, and, and helicopters. They saw the oil coming out of the vessel, but then basically it, it washed away. And I think this is an element as well where uh, uh, all the proactive activities uh, need to be taken uh, care of, but. Sometimes nature will help a little bit as well. Um, I think that nobody uh, responded to this uh, in, in, uh, with great force was also that there were no oil majors uh, behind this cargo. Uh, I think uh, the, the, uh, the cargo was uh, originated from Iran at the time, uh, just on the brink of uh, releasing the embargo, but I think still uh, somewhat iffy. And uh, so nobody wanted to know as well. What we do see, even if, there, if there's no spillage, uh, that an oil major will step in very quickly and very, uh, uh, yeah, fresh actually normally, in, in uh, a situation where they believe that they have even a little exposure. And uh, I think the moment that their uh, emergency response uh, systems kick in, um, you have of course a party that is uh, at the ship owner managers that want to control it, and a cargo interest is basically along for the ride. Uh, you can see that uh, that the communication sometimes is 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 complicated, and. Um, uh, we were involved with, uh, with an LPG carrier in Singapore, also a collision, only uh, some side shell uh, damage, a little bit of spillage, but that was basically controlled. And the cargo interest, uh, which was shell at the time, um, they said, well, we want an SDS of, of that, uh, that vessel. And um, LPG cargo, SDS in, in Singapore Anchorage, uh, there's not so much space, uh, but also the whole uh, LPG uh, cargo system was sound, was intact. So there was not really a need uh, for it. It would have been possible to go 200 miles to the destination port and basically um, discharge it at the, at the terminal itself. So we had to argue very, uh, very strongly to, uh, to make that happen. Uh, but the initial position of Shell was saying, no, no, we were not going to uh, allow uh, the continuation of this, uh, this transport of cargo on a somewhat damaged vessel. And uh, so this is something that uh, uh, is an additional aspect. And doing an STS operation in itself is not, uh, not, not too complicated, but you need to also, let's say, convince the authorities and allow, uh, ask them for their permission 
to, to get it done. And if they don't see the need for it as well, you're only arguing with the cargo interest uh, and the authorities even allow it. And uh, uh, I mentioned the uh, LNG carrier uh, earlier on. Uh, this uh, was a similar kind of uh, situation where Shell was a cargo interest. And uh, Shell basically did not sign off yet on the uh, SDS operation themselves. They were still reviewing, but they expected the Solvor uh, to have the permission from the authorities already. So that's also a bit of a strange situation where you have a cargo interest um, uh, withholding their uh, approval or permission yet, but expecting the authority in which uh, jurisdiction it takes place uh, to go ahead with it, um, where the liability is really with the, with the owners. Collision types, um, there are uh, many, many, uh, many possibilities, of course, how things can happen, how and um, uh, how to mitigate or stabilize situations. Was he it? Was it CK? Well, we, we were uh, not sure actually, it could be CK, but I think. No, it's not CK, that is CK, it's not CK. No. Ah, good, yeah. Um, uh, but this is basically uh, an, an important uh, historical case. Um, I think the days of uh, big spills and, uh, and incidents with, with tankers are actually uh, gone. Saying that, uh, I think uh, there's been a, a VLCC aground in Indonesia for, uh, for the last weeks. I don't think she's refloated yet, um, with, with about 300,000 tons of, uh, of, uh, of fruit. Um, no spillage. Uh, I think to that extent, uh, the, uh, the standards and safety of, of tank vessels are a step above uh, any other types of, of vessels that are uh, being operated. I think the uh, perception only from the market and the media is that uh, any, any vessel uh, has been addressed as a tanker if it has any oil on board. The, you can recall the RENA, the container vessel aground in uh, New Zealand. There were some, quite some initial reporting from the media where they were saying Okay, this tanker with 1,200 tons of, uh, uh, of oil uh, ran aground of uh, uh, the Astrolab in, in New Zealand. Of course, it's a container vessel and um, it's not, not a tanker. Um, if you have the uh, Emma Maersk, uh, I think she's uh, 14,000, 15,000 TEU, uh, they have a bunker capacity of 16,000 tons. Uh, so, which is quite significant, of course. And you could argue, well, that's a tanker in itself, but um, uh, not with the purpose to, to uh, uh, transport uh, uh, bunkers or, or product. So, uh, if those vessels, uh, even with uh, and, and wing tanks, get, uh, get damaged on those vessels and spill oil, um, by association, basically, it is. Uh, uh, <coughs> reflecting very bad on the, on, on, on vessels, uh, the, 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 the tankers that uh, have the proper safety and uh, reporting systems and in place basically in uh, double skinned vessels and all, all what you can think of, which came into effect over the last couple of years, uh, over the last well two decades actually, um, and also the, the precaution has been taken in the United States with OPA-90, uh, soldier marine firefighting. Uh, and that system basically uh, was completely geared uh, towards uh, mitigating any uh, and, and preventing any involuntary uh, release of oil. So salvage and marine firefighting, it's not salvage. Uh, it may be marine firefighting, but salvage is a voluntary act where, where uh, a free agree arrangement is by definition not salvage, but the intent is not 
uh, to uh, cover the, the property, the cargo or the vessel, is to prevent any uh, uh, involuntary uh, release of oil, either bunkers or cargo. So uh, this was, of course, uh, a tone setting for, for the market. Uh, and ever since, I think, the, uh, the market has stepped up and stepped up. And if we look at statistics from the uh, ISU, International Salvage Union, you also see that the um, uh, support or the response to tankers, uh, and also with uh, uh, in Tenko, that you uh, see that the uh, spill from tankers, in effect, is limited. So, um, uh, a bit more on the uh, on the arena because I think it's an interesting case. Uh, to see what can happen, even though uh, something, sometimes uh, parties see that the vessel is safely aground. Um, and basically with a, with, a, with a long ocean swell in uh, of, of New Zealand, uh, not much uh, tidal range, you could uh, argue that uh, not much is, will be happening. So this is uh, when the arena more or less went aground. But this was uh, only a couple of days later, and um, at this point in time, she, she ran hard to ground, she, she, she cut the corner, and basically uh, ran over the shallow. In that particular case, um, the ground reaction uh, for this vessel is uh, uh, close to 16,000 tons. The vessel will not go anywhere, right? So even if you um, uh, argued and discussed if it's possible, to refloat this vessel, um, and we said, yeah, well, uh, the infrastructure uh, is not there in New Zealand, there's nothing, uh, a few port trucks and so on. This location is uh, about uh, 12, 30 miles from, uh, from shore, um, so also responding for harbor trucks to this location might not be so, uh, so easy. Um, sorry. But then, going into a situation like this, uh, only uh, only somewhat later, and of course there are weather predictions and so on. But in this case, uh, the solvers were on board uh, to uh, start uh, taking off the oil. Um, a local uh, bunker barge was uh, arranged. Uh, the bunker barge uh, was uh, DP bunker barge, I believe, uh, so they could actually approach the uh, the vessel uh, the, quite closely on their own, but uh, the master of that bunker barge was not very comfortable with this, and they said, well, we need another tug as well. So, um, commercial uh, reality is somewhat different in a, in a, in a salvage situation, so um, asking you, uh, what would you guesstimate that the tug and barge for the uh, debunkering of this, uh, uh, what would the day rate be for, uh, for uh, or should be, and what, what it was, maybe. Could you uh, venture a guess? Daily rate for a 4,000 ton uh, bunker barge? In New Zealand. In New Zealand. In New Zealand. So Singapore, maybe uh, 15, 20,000 dollars a day. I don't know, maybe a bit more. Yeah, so uh, it was not 75 to 100, it was uh, $200,000 a day. And um, of course, uh, hey, there seems to be a continuing uh, team here, but uh, this was uh, operated by a Shell Terminal. Uh, not that Shell had any, anything to do with it, with it uh, ultimately. But that was, but of course. You say, you say this DP? DP bunker? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's some special, specialized. Yeah, but uh, specialized that uh, it, it warrants expensive. another. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I think they were thinking it themselves as well. But uh, um, no, I, I think everybody agrees that the 200,000 for an, a token barge combination is maybe a little bit excessive. Um, as a solver, of course, you need to take off the bunkers because otherwise it, uh, it will spill. Uh, and some of the, the bunkers spilled, actually. So there was not really a choice to do that. Um, and we come later to that as to contracting and so on. 
but of course that uh, these kind of things focuses uh, the mind a little bit and uh, you can say well yeah I don't want to have it I don't want to take it uh, but then you know for a fact that maybe if the vessel uh, breaks tears uh, the debunkers will be uh, released of course we did uh, file a complaint and also try to get the uh, authorities involved to basically put pressure to say well this is just unacceptable and ultimately I think there was a settlement uh, arranged um, but the initial uh, engagement was on the on the terms that they basically dictated. <coughs> so um, and and this was uh, I, I don't know how long I think 35 days uh, were was the oil removal uh, if I'm not mistaken so that's a that's a that's a big chunk of uh, of money um, and it's of course not only the, the bunker bars and the truck that is uh, that's engaged. Um, yeah, you need to have uh, uh, the, the pump spread, the salt force, uh, you go helicopter in and out. Um, and while you're doing that, you also of course uh, try to secure other parts of the vessel as well. So, um, and to make uh, matters worse, so if you have a grounding, it will always be on a, on a, on a sacred rock, and especially in uh, the Astrolab, is a uh, uh, sacred place for the Maori. Um, so there was a great concern as to uh, if, if uh, any, any dealings there would be appropriate for those uh, communities um, while you're in a situation like that. So the crew was, uh, or the salvage, the crew was already uh, abandoned the vessel. But the salvage team had to basically uh, be uh, evacuated from the vessel as well. And because of the weather conditions, uh, the de deteriorating uh, weather conditions, the Navy had to, uh, to step in uh, in that particular case. Just out of curiosity, was the Navy burned for the entire ship? Yeah, I think at a, at there were various stages of, of this operation, but I think you sometimes uh, went into uh, a range of about uh, 250, 350. To three fifty, uh, three hundred fifty thousand dollars a day. Um, I think for the first uh, three months, yeah, it, for the first uh, three months it was uh, uh, ninety million dollars, so a um, million dollars uh, a day, uh, all in all. And for the first emergency response part. Um, later on, in the initial stage as well, there was a crane barge mobilized from Singapore to New Zealand. Uh, so yeah, the, their uh, uh, exceptional situation, of course. And all this time, uh, this this case is in the public eye, even though it's uh, New Zealand. Uh, nowadays, everybody knows about it, of course. Okay, it took a little bit longer from uh, October <coughs> to January to basically uh, uh, go into a situ situation like this. But then, of course, um, and this is. Uh, with the container vessel, the, the cargoes, even though they're benign, they might still interact or uh, have, have, have certain aspect characteristics that they might be considered a pollutant as well, so they need to be dealt with as well. But for a tanker, let's say a tanker breaks up, uh, trapped oil uh, in, in pockets of the vessel, uh, you could uh, envisage uh, that that needs to be dealt with as well. And, moment that you have a little bit of, of search into tanks or pockets of uh, that normally cannot be approached it will immediately for a machine it will uh, create a situation where uh, well only uh, a liter of, uh, of oil uh, will show very bad on uh, the surrounding because it spreads so thin and everybody can see it immediately of course so that will go on and on and on uh, in, in those circumstances as well. So the cargo aspect then becomes uh, quite a bit of an issue. Also, um, the rock where it went to the ground uh, was sloping, uh, so subsequently it, it, it sank, uh, the, the stern of the, of the vessel. Um, But uh, we uh, continue with uh, basically uh, our uh, first uh, segment of, of, of uh, the scenario that we want to, uh, to, to 
work with you on. Um, we, uh, I, I think uh, up to this stage, I think just an introduction as to what the casualties and so on. Uh, if there's any questions, please uh, don't hesitate to, uh, or also with respect to this or how you see that for, yeah, maybe how you would deal with it in a situation that uh, yourselves. Uh, I don't know if you trade on any, uh, I don't know your trade routes actually, but uh, you're everywhere. Um, but would you go into New Zealand with, with, uh, with vessels or at the Pacific? Uh, but even like uh, South America, Chile, uh, everywhere. So uh, it's always uh, those areas that you say, well, uh, hopefully nothing will happen. Uh, but when it does, then it becomes uh, quite, uh, quite difficult, of course. And uh, I think um, New Zealand, uh, as to their response, uh, takes a page out of the uh, Australian uh, role book. Uh, Australian uh, looked at the, uh, the US uh, role book, actually. Um, and so you see that the authorities get very quickly and, 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 and actively involved in that there's a um, space uh, for all the stakeholders, especially non-governmental organizations, but also within the uh, governmental organizations, Navy, um, <coughs> yeah, the, the, the Navy, Coast Guard, uh, if you want to land cargo or you want to uh, STS cargo and you want to land it ashore, there are uh, custom issues uh, related to it. There are, of course, uh, if it's a major incident, uh, the financing becomes uh, an issue. Um, so the correspondence from the PNI, but also the underwriters, how is this going to work? In the United States, uh, you have a qualified individual uh, that uh, maybe one or two or three or four that would represent you. So they basically have an authority to spend your money uh, the moment something is happening. Um, but that's not an uh, infinite uh, amount of money, of course. Uh, there are um, kind of uh, stages in which uh, your, your uh, protection and indemnity uh, uh, club will cover and then it goes to reinsurance and so on. So normally uh, when that's depleted or, or that comes uh, concerning, we're a little bit further into an incident, but uh, at the same token, uh, uh, that goes very quick. We've been involved uh, in British Columbia on the removal of a tugboat. 30, 35 meter tugboat uh, had uh, gasoline on board, about 200 tons, I think uh, maybe uh, 150 tons. The tugboat doesn't uh, carry that much. Um, of course also in uh, First Nations kind of the territory. Um, so very uh, sensitive uh, environment. And that total uh, operation uh, for a period of about two months, I think two months, uh, was uh, $35 million. And this is uh, so a tugboat of 30 meters. Um, it doesn't really linearly uh, uh, correlate that if you have like a 300 meter uh, tanker, uh, it will be uh, 10 times uh, more expensive. Uh, might depend on, on the type of situation that you're in. but. Um, that being said, I think it's important to, uh, uh, to see that uh, the impact in a very short period of time uh, can be quite uh, drastic. Um, again, this is a container vessel, but uh, you can imagine that uh, maybe the cargo elements are different in, in an incident here. Uh, but. Um, for a tanker, there are other aspects that, of course, uh, come in, and especially uh, if there are different parcels, but the, the oil major will definitely be there. So, uh, uh, Captain Anuj, we're actually now going to the stage that we uh, go into the, uh, okay. the, the drill, the training.
Okay. Um, the introduction, uh, try to uh, assist on that, or um, how are we go about uh, just introducing it first? Okay. okay. Yeah. So, this is the, uh, the first stage, basically the introduction of the, 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 the case that we would like to, uh, to run through with, uh, with yourselves. Um, Motor Tanker uh, uh, Leopard. I think, do we have some, some additional uh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe, uh, yeah, I we, if we can have this in the yeah. So what we're going to do actually, we're just going to have groups of four. Uh, how many guys you got here? Fifteen. Fifteen? Yeah, that's good. So four groups, and uh, then you will actually lead it for us. Like, you know, we just give you a scenario. You decide what is the next action you want, using your SMS if you like, you know? Yeah. And then we just take it on from there. We talk about other things as well. So just pass it on to you. So please just, let me just pass one copy each piece. Can you do me a favor? Just write the names of all the resolve guys, the instructors on the board there, so we can have all your names correct. Yeah, we have all. Uh, yeah. That, uh, your names and your titles, yeah. so we know. Uh, all right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe hold on for them, and then, uh, I think we will. Uh, I'm very offended. Huh? <laughs> what is wrong? <laughs> <laughs> so I have got the diff most difficult name in the world. The least international name. Uh, so. Um, I'm also not sure everyone in the group is aware that you're our open 90 salver and that we have a contractual agreement for you in the United States, which might be yeah. nice to touch upon just briefly about what that means to us as a company. All right. I yeah, mean, yeah. because some of the folks are new and they, they're not uh, acclimated to... to yeah, no, no, apologies to that. Yeah, I need to be able, uh, maybe while uh, um, we, you got the uh, handout there uh, with uh, the, the scenario that we would like to address, um, just the initial situation, I'll, uh, uh, I think we have some, some section actually that we, we uh, touch upon the... Uh, I don't know, you mentioned because I was still late, I'm sorry about that, I just came in from India. One of the reasons why we are doing this exercise with you is because we are your OPA 90 service providers, basically emergency response providers. We want you to know us, so in case of emergency, you can pick the phone, you can call the guys. Obviously, in America, we have a headquarters and there is a 24-7 line, but here locally in Singapore, we actually have a full-blown salvage team available to you. And, and uh, that's why I brought Andy, and he's our senior salvage master. Uh, uh, normally he doesn't talk, but when he talks, he got really, really careful. As well. <laughs> yes. So, so he does uh, all the big jobs that we talk about, like Rena. He was on Rena, and uh, so many other ships. But for a change, he's grounded here in Singapore. So, so that's about him. Uh, open IT. I'm sure do you know about what is Open IT? Where is our contract? What we do for you? Yes or no? If we have any question about Open IT, we go to the same. Okay. <laughs> so maybe I might as tell you what we do is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in, in US, it is quite well developed. Like, you know, you don't have any emergency, nothing much happens, but if something goes wrong, you're required to have three contracts in place. One is your QI. You have to have a qualified individual in US who is your point of contact with the rest of the world. You know, your administration, your all his pill responders, your salvers, and everybody has been in clubs and all. So he actually has authority on your behalf to spend all the money and lease the requirements. Okay. Which in our case is Compliance Systems Incorporated, Savannah. Yeah. Okay. Then you're required to have at least one oil spill responder, which is typically an RC because they cover 70% of the U.S. You also have MMRC, which is covering the No, rest. we're in RC. Huh? In NRC. 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 Yeah. Right. And with NRC, Resolve has what you call a one call emergency response network. One telephone call, it goes to NRC as well as comes to us. 
We are your Samuelian Marine firefighters. The difference between oil spill responders and us is, while they will be all around your ship going on the beaches and all, we'll be coming on board and sitting with your captain and uh, planning out a situation like what goes on and how to fix the ship. We stay on board, oil spill responder is, it stays away and uh, of course they are much more bigger because there are thousands of people going all over. So that's how we do the things. Okay. And uh, as we go along with we'll starboard side? Yeah, yeah on starboard side. side. Yes. So now it's going down yeah. to the forward and uh, yeah, the 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 is sufficient to take a lift there, go far ahead, but it's not sufficient I think it's, it's what I, I understand from here, this, the draft and the uh, list is, the, it is going like this. So she's riding on top of the, uh, she's, going the over, she's, she's, she's going over the like water. water. Yes, correct. The water's but there, but the water's not necessarily causing the ship to the vessel. What's actually causing the ship to the vessel? Is the, the rock. Yeah. Okay, you run it the ground, and then the, the rock is supporting the vessel. Mm -hmm. The fact that you breach your ballast tank, means you have flooding. Now that will cause her to trim a little bit forward. If those tanks were empty per se, maybe she would trim out. If the, if the, core, if the ballast tanks were not bridged, she would definitely be trimmed by the stern. Possibly. Because yes. she, she, that's, there's a longitudinal center of flotation. It's about force. So your hub force is, is a longitudinal center of flotation. So you come but it's still trimmed here. So we're saying the water can come in here to so actually increase our draft, but it's not going to have any effect on this. That's it's pretty. It's good. And if we've got water in here, mm -hmm. she would. There's a. There's definitely a force trying to trim her to stuff list her to starboard. Mm -hmm. This, of course, is trying to list us to port, but this is a substantial amount of water because it's actually it's changed the draft. Um, so, one but what do, if it doesn't trim you to start the weight? Because mm -hmm. the, they are breached. Uh, they're breached, so they're yeah. not giving you points. Mm. They are not going to... So it's not actually affecting the healer vessel. Correct. So would it they are they're, they're, uh, breached on... Uh, but it, water is passing through. But it does have an effect. What's the effect? But if your draft can't change because you're aground, what does it change? It changes something. You're right. Theoretically, the vessel should roll to starboard based upon your points, but it can't roll to starboard because she's aground. Mm. So if it can't roll to starboard because something's supporting it and those tanks are flooded, there is a net change of weight on the vessel. Also, the cargo has shifted to the port side, so you have the... the uh, a little bit, but mm. it's a liquid cargo. It's not like a grain ship cargo. Mm. In the center, yeah. One of you will have to explain the whole situation on the flip chart to the rest of the guys. It's clear as to what you're thinking. So the tanks are flooded. If the tanks were well, no, they, they've done yeah. something. They've done something. Yeah, Correct, that's done. Get all this information. We have all this information, all the data, all the data, and then we we form a vessel's respective emergency response service. Yeah, class class emergency response service, whatever, whichever class. And. And then we, we follow the instructions as per our uh, checklist. Uh, advise the master. Uh, that would be on the. Yeah, I understand.
Okay. Uh, That's anyway done. We, we, and whoever takes the first call, make sure that the. Each, each individual of the team takes out responsibilities. So who will report to class, who will report to owners, who will report to you know, We have an open line with the master, so that we don't have any, any other parties interfering. So that is all in the checklist what we are supposed to do. I'm opening it up. I'm, I'll open up the common portal. Also. Ask the captain to save the VDR, and we ourselves will inform the flag yeah. and the MPA and yeah. Indonesian authorities, being the nearest coastal states. Yeah. And we're going to activate, of course, going to give you a call, the salvage team as per yeah. the contract. Yeah. And we'll also inform the owners and the PNI and the HNM interest okay. of the vessel. And uh, we will also contact our media contractor to yeah. get an initial statement ready to okay. be released. Because so, it's yeah. Can you put it down on a quick chart? Okay. And then just explain to everybody else. Yeah. This is the action that you are going to be taking, and this more information that you want from the ship. Yeah, this is a preliminary based on the Absolutely initial incident perfect. report number one. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, we also inform the voyage order and the vested interest, like the charter party, shell, or whatever. Okay. Notify of the damage, and we will come back with the next update. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. Okay, let's have a conversation. Yeah. <laughs> But the water will not uh, affect us because uh, it is free and free yeah, yeah. So because the hull is already, if we lift her, the water will seep out. Well, it's not good. Basically, forming a fulcrum at uh, the rock, pivot point yeah, is, uh, so is the going, so it is going like this. Yeah. So basically, the point is... No, 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 you can copy and write. You don't have it in my handwriting. But you remember what you said, yeah? This is standard, actually. Aren't you the log keeper? You can, you can, you can. Yes. Simona, you can add the form next stuff in and all that if you want. Because there's no injury, but you can keep the contact. I have to say, I'm already out of the crisis room because they yeah, don't do the proof thing. Yeah, but just try to follow 003. ECM matrix 003. ECM? Yeah, emergency conditions matter. Matrix 003. Hey, no cheating. <laughs> That's also here. What do you need? It's here. Top copy. <coughs> I gave it to make copies. Yeah. They're supposed to be making copies. That's also here in the emergency contingency. We have this folder on the common We will give you the checklist as well in case yeah. you just want you want to keep it. Look on the back there. Look on the back. There you go. This this is what uh the, the questions are on the back of the form, too. So turn, turn that over. Turn, turn that over. There you go. Hopefully it matches that, huh? Same one, right? Aspect will change to the local district. So, the local agent, local, uh, no, not the this thing, will be your local here, uh, MPA. Yeah. Uh, MPA. And of course, we have the uh, no, storage plan will give the cargo quantity, which is up to. Are we in Singapore waters? Yeah, Singapore waters. Yeah. Yeah.
cargo on board, what has been done. So I said, once we get... Yeah, what is the cargo? Buffalo Rock is Singapore. They said oil. Cargo diesel oil. Cargo diesel oil. Diesel. So already mentioned. Buffalo Rock. Sorry? Buffalo Rock is Singapore. Singapore. Yeah, half Singapore. Buffalo Rock is just <laughs> off south of One Fathom Bank. Just on the starboard side when you're coming up. That's where you go to watch the Buffalo Roam. Yeah. Okay, so office checklist, start filling that up. We get this going. Contact with media. Just write who is it. MD. Just write in by the thing, no? MD. He's already here. What is it? Ah, okay. Each person has got to take it off. Each person has got this thing. What, what crew and department will do? What marine department will do? Fleet manager will do? Superintendent will do? No, but what do we do? We just can't say we... No, this is what, no contact. He wants you to write down the actions of this group on that flip chart yeah. so you can explain what you've decided. Like the first thing. Yeah, so someone, a very talkative fellow, have to go up and explain the, the actions. Yeah, I know. This is a disadvantage of being talkative. Talkative. Just move all that. Uh, if it gets your face. Okay, first thing. First initial report. This is uh, initial report. To office. Internal, uh, so show us the Wait, before you write on that, make sure you have it here before you yeah. fail it out there. Because mm. that's initial the one you're going to prove. So Cargo uh, interest? Yeah. It is the uh, report of the and then the call the Initial internal Initial internal notification. One minute, one minute. Just recycle what we just did for uh, <laughs> for Fran Iru, no? You guys are supposed to be filling out your actions on that uh, on that paper there, so that you can present it what you've decided to do. This is going to be like BP have the spill on the uh, the coffee on the. So what's the action plan, Captain Sari? Your action plan. So we first has uh, yeah we determine where she has all this what we have determined was the she has run about location. Yeah. So uh, this we have uh, got. Whether uh, they don't have, I will check on safety. No, check before pollution threat. Personal threat. Any 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 immediate. immediate uh, Immediate, uh, immediate personal uh, and then pol uh, environment yeah. personal followed by environment okay go vessel is already loaded now yeah so she's we have to inform the charter yeah that's the we will inform yeah we will inform from here i mean he can but it's easier that he takes care of the emergency and we do all the notifications from our end. This, this, uh, this checklist has got... Uh, exactly, how to do what, mm. who will do what. Mm. What is the checklist number? Well, we, know, we would tell him to comply with his voyage orders, huh? Yes, sir. We but would tell him to comply with his voyage orders for sure. For first for him will be to take care of the situation yes. on hand and then to do anything else. The charters, worst comes to worst, we can do from our end and tell them the owner is following up, master's following up, he's a bit tied up now and he's following up. Just a note from us will also help. Damage stability? Yeah, ERS. Yeah. Damage stability. Yeah. Office form 023. Who's your uh, provider for uh, ERS? Well, we use the class. Most vessels, yeah. So whatever class, whatever yeah, class they are. Yeah, whichever yeah. one. Okay, okay. okay. 
Media. They go, yeah. we respond. Uh, no, no, we, no. Will, we the MD will go to the media. Boss will, boss will take care. If they come, <laughs> yeah, but we will have a we will have a press release standby, Maxim. We always have one standby. Next. Next. You also have a media. What is the question? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. MPI we've got, network. MPI. Okay. And we've got the contact list ready. We've done training with uh, with crisis consultants as well. Yeah. They're now uh, what do they change their name? Edward Ian and those guys. Yeah, yeah. Oh, navigate. The Na yeah, they've gone yeah. to navigate now. And the helix. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Helix. Next that was the it. Helix question now navigate. Is, uh, Before crisis reporting. consultants. Yes. Okay. Can you put this into the proper? Yeah. Personal pollution. Five minutes, guys. Five minutes. This we will go through with the master first call. If you need someone to role play the master, we have uh, uh, one of our seagoing staff attending. So, so this young man is uh, being promoted to captain, so you put him in the hot seat first thing. <laughs> he's been promoted or not? He, he's doing his three weeks in the office. We have to torture him. On the we torture him for three weeks first. <laughs> it depends how he performs today. <laughs> if he's a good actor, if he's a good actor. Owners? Owners? Look for availability for repair. Oh, there. Okay. Okay, got it. Trying to read upside down. Good handwriting, though. I thought he's on the boat out to the ship. Set it up, and we know who's doing what. Then it becomes easier to follow up on it. Because otherwise, if we don't <coughs> set it up, then no one will know who will do what. This is in an infrared yard. Shell is waiting. Please stop it. He has got a computer. The man is sitting here. As he speaks, he just types. They only need. They only need flash report, huh? Uh, that comes later. Uh, we're talking about a real one. Uh. Okay. We're talking about a real one. Which one? 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 Which one?
What are you saying? I How did we close it the first time? How did it? Yeah, we closed it. It's really repaired. Yeah. How about the recording? I'm identified recording out here. He's supposed to take care of this. All by this Suppose MD is not there, Somebody then, take, uh, then uh, he might, uh, Western will take over these responsibilities uh, and Western's responsibilities uh, we will take over. So yeah. next, we do have the substitute, that is also there in a manual, who substitutes for whom in a crisis. Because with our office anybody can be traveling anytime <laughs> and you never know. So, that's family is on board. What are we, what are we, uh, 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 Okay, which group wants to have a first tap? The first? Yeah. 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 I think ladies first. Yeah, we yeah. 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 Okay, right? <laughs> you talk with him about this damage that, that he's asking about. No, no, meeting we decided. It is a nice wording. I told you. Hold on. We have a tank that is 40,000 tons. It's like Buffalo Rock. And based on the preliminary information, uh, we are in the office. Fortunately, we are the managers, so we are in the office at the time. And uh, so our crisis response team is already being mastered. So we're going to get some more information uh, besides uh, what is given in the report to ask for is there any pollution in the first place? Or is there any personal injuries or any oil spill in the water or outside the cargo containment area? And once we have that, we're going to ask, speak to the master to save the VDR, and then we're going to inform the uh, coastal states. In this case, it's going to be MPA and the Indonesian authorities. And probably it needs to be sent out as soon as possible because of the busy traffic uh, out there. And we also inform the flag, and we're going to inform the class to get the uh, uh, emergency uh, kind of the uh, plan. Uh, give them the current information, what we have, so that they can work out our damage stability and you know, so we can follow that with the master later. We're also going to inform the owners and activate PNI and HM in this case, and also contact our contracted salvage, I guess in this case is response, resolve, sorry. And we'll also get uh, our uh, media uh, response company, MCI in this case and get an initial press statement for uh, release to APA and the other public. And we will also inform the charters and the other commercial interests for the cargo uh, and so that to keep them advised as per the contractual obligations. And uh, we will keep a, a list of the next of kin just in case as a contingency plan to notify them. So that's going to be our uh, first response from the office from the incident command center. And we do have the going to go back to the vessel and ask for some more information after some time uh, in case of uh, uh, the attack soundings and what is the level of breach and things like that. And we're going to, in the meantime, we'll also get information back from the class uh, what is the damage stability on the vessel at this present stage and get some timely information on all that, pass to the class and get the feedback from the vessel and the class so that we know that the uh, vessel is not going to go into any uh, sort of serious conditions from then on. And we would need all these plans in the office. It's available in the crisis room. So we're going to look at them and uh, kind of work out the plan of next. And we'll also be contacting the 
the servers to give them these updates from the class and the vessel so that they can prepare for any worst case scenario and also otherwise mobilize the uh, you know, for the next uh, scenario for HTS or transfer of uh, cargo. Great. Thank you. Yeah, this group. Um, morning, like, like Captain Baskar said, it's, it's, it's exactly the same condition, so I'm not going to go through the condition again, but the, what we discussed here was the master's first responsibility would be to inform office and inform the local authority, here in this case, and check for safety of personnel immediately. That would be his uh, first priority, that safety of life is not compromised, followed by the environment. That, that's what the master would do initially. That's his topmost prerogative initially. After that would come a few other things like informing charters, voyage orders, which are commercially related, but these are the first priority which he has to take care of at that time. Once master informs office, it's either in a major emergency, we have changed our company system around now. We, we have an emergency contact phone, so it should be most probably a duty superintendent getting a call for something as big as this, or it could be the technical superintendent. But then the duty superintendent would activate the contingency team. So he goes back to the fleet manager, the MD, the senior manager, HSQE, the marine managers, straight away into the emergency contingency room office. And uh, there we have, once we are in there, the emergency contingency team gets in there, all the data is available. We have the plans, the manuals, hard copies, soft copies, everything gets access once we are in there. People getting in there, we have office form 023, which helps so that we don't miss out on any of the notifications which we do. <coughs> Owners, p &I, charters, media, flag, ERS, damage stability are what we thought about. Damage stability, obviously, since it's a breach, will be high on the priority. But it's not going to go in any specific order because in the form, we have got who's supposed to do what. So obviously, the marine side, the master mariners or the HSQE team will take care of the damage stability, picking with class. The fleet managers would do the owners, or the superintendent would do the owners, P and I. Charters, we've put in here because the master may be too preoccupied, so we drop in a note here because they are the commercial interest. They do have media speculation too. So the charters will do the part. We do a drop an initial line from them and then tell them the master would follow up at a later stage when he's the media very important today taken care of by the MD directly or by his immediate substitute. Again, chances people traveling, people out, which would be taken care of by the backups, which we are again stated in our manual. Yeah, so this is very important. These two forms, the ECM 003 for grounding and the Office 23 form. As long as we go into these, we should cover the scenario in its entirety. Like Papuji said, bell lock keeping, time keeping, very critical. And each person doing their own thing that has to keep their time. That's it. Very good. Great. <coughs> okay. Uh, something uh, similar. We go by the list uh, Office uh, 023 to the vessel. Uh, our uh, first is uh, to get uh, the scenario GA, weather, tide. Uh, we ask the vessel after completing this list. Uh, for the soundings and uh, tank, uh, tank conditions, departure present to, to for the RRDA and external soundings. Notifications, uh, VTIS, appoint agents, PNI, uh, Helen machinery for uh, tugs out of Singapore, uh, RRDA uh, press release, notifications to owners from uh, the, the required channel, and uh, then vessel, after they have some time, uh, check her maneuverability by checking rudder, propeller, and uh, engine room tanks. Great. So you are saying that uh, you, what external soundings are you talking about? Just in the immediate vicinity? In, in the immediate vicinity, yes. Okay. All right. You have means of taking those soundings? Around the vessel? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And like Great. Okay. Right, I think between the three of you have captured most of it. And uh, you need additional information. I see that these two groups haven't asked for salvers or emergency <laughs> responders to come in. It's well, only these already, guys. Good. Okay. Already. Priority first. Uh, 
I'm not saying it's a good thing to do. Okay? It's not like, okay, here's the key. You go and do whatever you need to, not required. You can probably okay, assess you know, yourself first. Sorry, in a real scenario, do you go directly into service first? I don't think so. H&M. No, but we don't actually go into service. Yeah, that's why. Right. They want to know. You mentioned it. Yeah. Mentioned yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not saying that you got to. And I don't think we should use the word called salvers. We should just say emergency responders. You know, because you don't know what situation is it, and it cannot always be a salvage situation. All right. So just say. It's going to come from H&M, right? So once we know that H&M is going to come from them, so they want to. Oh yeah, that was my yeah, follow-up question as well. So if you uh, engage in uh, emergency, emergency responders, so how would that dialogue be basically? Yep. And so uh, what do you want them to do? And so we'll sort it out. Uh, of course, we're quite flexible. We can sort things out. But basically, I think uh, maybe the situation, uh, we would require your feedback input as to what you want us to do. Um, so, and, and I think that is uh, where yeah. we uh, touch upon later. but. Uh, this, I think, is, is an important part. Uh, and there's also the jurisdiction has been uh, identified, yep. but that might pose some challenges as well, as I, I mentioned before. The only difference that's going to be between this case and had it been in America would be that you will actually straight away call us or we will get called straight because it's supposed to respond, irrespective of whether we have a contract or not. We already have a contract. For us, yeah. it's the proximity of the place, Buffalo Rock, it's the middle of the street.